On today's show, HTC announces a VR headset in collaboration with Valve. A composer is making music with slime. And 3D printed food that grows its own filling. Oh my god, HTC Half-Life 3 confirmed. It's tomorrow daily. citizens of the internet, welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. I'm punching the sky, like I'm, hell. I know, I'm your host Ashley Scott, and joining me as always, just on the other side of the camera, is producer Logan, Logan, Logan Moy, if you're, if you're looking for his last name. Uh, Kale, <laughs> Kale, as we mentioned last week, was going out to see his grandma for her birthday, surprised everybody, apparently his grandma was very excited to see him. Unfortunately, Kale is snowed in at the airport and they just keep canceling his plane ticket home. So we don't know. If, we think Kale just moved to Connecticut. Yeah, now. He, he just lives there now. He just lives there. And uh, today, this morning, he sent me some video footage he shot at the airport and wanted, us, wanted me to show this to you guys. So, uh, Rune, do we have that? <laughs> Looks so exciting there. Yeah, people are really upset about missing their flights. Uh, so come home soon, Kale. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, uh, we're hoping he'll get a flight home tonight. But yeah, he's been trying to get a flight home for like over a day at this point. So uh, he's going to end up being like Tom Hanks in that Terminal movie. Yeah, where he just lives in one bad movie over and over again. Over and over, yeah. That's going to be terrible. Um, but on that note, we've got some great stories for you today. So let's hit the headlines. <laughs> This was a story I was bummed Kale wasn't here to talk about. It's a very Kale story. It is a very Kale-centric story. HTC announced at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona this weekend a VR headset. And not just any VR headset. They developed it with Valve, creators of Steam. And they're the first video game company to kind of get involved with the VR as a brand, right? Like right. branding VR. Um, well, Sony's had Project Morpheus. Oh, the right. But, right. but it hasn't, it's still not come to consumers. Nothing out there is like really retail that are these sort of PC gaming uh, virtual reality headsets. So I'll explain a little bit about this. Um, it's going to compete. This is a PC gaming VR headset, meaning you don't slide a phone into it to use it. So we have like the Gear VR where you put your phone in and then you use it. And you have to pretty much have a specific brand of phone to right. be able to use it. So. Right. Um, so this is actually a standalone VR headset that plugs into your PC. It's called the Vive or the Vive. I think it's Vive. Vive. The I like HTC Vive. 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 The like, Vive. Like live. Live like Vive. Um, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna take the French tactic called the Vive. It's the Vive. Um, so it's a partnership with Valve. There is uh, HTC's Peter Chu showing it off. It, uh, again, does not use a phone. Standalone headset uses a PC. Uh, they talked about at Mobile World Congress using a pair of controllers, which would suggest something similar to what Sony uh, has going with their PlayStation Move, where you okay. have like sort of, it looks like ice cream. <laughs> like the sticks. It seems like a good alternative to having to buy an entire stage that you can walk in place on. Very true. And um, and so what they were saying is uh, they promised full room virtual reality via something they're calling room scale experience so that you can actually walk around objects. Like they're going to scan your room. The, the headset itself has room scanning technology in it. So the, the headset has like a camera on the front of it then? It has like a scanning technology, sort of like a connect almost where it would like scan the room and then you'd be able to sort nice. of... Yeah. And then, uh, so they want to release a developer edition this month, which is really soon, uh, which means they are ready to immediately get in development, which is cool. And then consumer headset later this year basically goes head to head with Oculus. Wow. So it's going to be, this holiday season is going to be, eight, this is going to be the hot ticket item, I think. I'm calling it now. It's, it's not even, it's like 10 months before Christmas, VR headset is going to be the hot ticket item. Are you going to get the first generation of consumer VR headsets. I think I have to. Yeah. I feel like I have to. I just want I just want to have it. I've tried the Oculus Rift demos. I like it's just so cool and so fun to use and yeah. I just really enjoy it. I, I got to I'll buy it. I don't know if I'm willing to pay twice as much as what I will pay 2 years from now. Fair. Um, but I'll go over to your house and use yours. Yeah, yeah, you can just come over to my house and use, <laughs> use it. It's totally fine. But yeah, so really interesting stuff. You can go over uh, to HTC's website. They have uh, everything. And then we also have some stuff on uh, CNET that we'll have later this week with the, uh, the, the Vive, which is pretty cool. It was kind of surprising that they held the event on a Sunday. I didn't. I wasn't expecting to wake up and see tech news ye uh, yesterday. So that's uh, that's a Mobile World Congress thing. So they uh, just kind of like CES, where everything kind of starts at the beginning of the week and then goes through. Uh, Mobile World Congress's sort of press day is like that Sunday, and then okay. they do all their press conferences, and all the news comes out, and then and then they have the rest of the conference sort of do things, and a whole bunch of CNET 
is at is in Barcelona right now. Um, and to those people, I say, uh, hola. And I don't know, I have good luck. Buena suerte. You have to do a little list because they're in Barcelona. <laughs> um, but yeah, so good luck. Have a, have a great trip at Mobile World Congress. And, uh, and yeah, so that's, uh, that's, the, that's the haps over at MWC, some really interesting VR stuff. I'm Tell me about, about this professor with the slime mold because I'm you're really into music. Yeah, so a professor slash composer made, um, is making music or making a, a musical duet with using fungus a biocomputer, an iPad, and some slime. Weird. Yeah, so what, what happens is, um, so he plays, he, he'll, he has a grand piano, and he plays the Kay. music, he plays notes on a grand piano. Okay, so I'm the professor. It is then picked notes. up by a, a piece of fungus, which is known to, uh, to be able to read audio signals or audio notes. Okay, so I play my piano into a microphone, microphone sends, sends music, my music, piano music, to the fungus. Yes. Okay. And then the fungus, much like we learned in Ghostbusters, can fungus and slime can transmit electrical signals. Ooh. So the fungus then interprets these musical notes and sends it through the biocomputer, which is able to interpret the, the messages being sent from the fungus. So, so as we're looking at this video, if I'm not mistaken, that the wires right there that are coming out, that's actually going down into the fungus. That's OK, so that's the piano, obviously. Mm -hmm. I'm not completely boneheaded. Right. But those go, and then there's a the the fungus is part of a biocomputer. Yes, so the okay. fungus is inside the biocomputer or Got surrounded it. by it in some way. Okay. And then so when when the fungus receives the musical notes, it then transmits its own signal out of out of the fungus through the biocomputer, and then it controls it goes to an iPad, which then controls these uh these magnets that are hovered over piano strings. Ooh. And so the fungus is is taking the the music from the piano, interpreting it, and sending it out to make its own music. That is the weirdest thing I've ever heard of. And now the, now the composer, rather than just control a piece of fungus, decided to play along with it. Well, and why what, would you not? As one does, Right, you it, have a chance to play music with nature, why not? We yes, saw it with, uh, with the uh, tree stump vinyl. Oh and, yeah, yeah, the tree stump vinyl yeah. last year, okay. So, but the music sounded very sci science fiction-y. It had like a lot of weird tones. Do we, and we actually have a sample of it, um, if you want to go ahead and play that. Let's take a listen. So if you're if you're listening to it right now, um, which you probably are, uh, you, it sounds like almost like out of 2001 or, I was or say something a space similar. Aussie yeah, or it's very uh, the very uh, very bleak and and uh, it's a little depressing. Yeah, uh, and a little uh, it's just very sci-fi. Like it has that weird B movie sci-fi, like almost like um, a theremin, but not but much more digital. Yeah. But it like, sounds like a synthesizer, yeah, but it's like not at all. It's it's all analog instruments so weird. um the the sound is coming from from the magnets which is rather than plucking a string like a piano hits hits a string and right. makes the it's vibration. just reading a response from the fungus right and then the ipad's telling saying okay here's your response and now i'm telling what the electromagnets yeah on so the it's, piano it's vibrating the strings using magnets as opposed oh. to actually physically hitting the string that's weird so that's so what's causing the more of the the synthesizer sound can we expect the mold to do a collaboration with kanye west this year uh, yeah, but it's a surprise, so you oh. don't want, we, we can't say too much okay. about it. I won't say anything about it. Um, so that brings me to our hashtag of the day, actually. TD Duets is our hashtag of the day. And uh, I think the question is, what weird musical pairing would you want to hear? Uh, for me, it would be, I would want to hear Taylor Swift collaborate with the sounds of her digestion after she eats a sandwich. I want to hear... I want to use the fungus, okay. but I want it to play black key songs using only the white keys. Oh, I like it. I like it. It's going to really upbeat black key songs. Yeah. It's a little of minor stuff Definitely. and sharp stuff. Now it's going to change. Yeah, it'll, it'll, get, really interesting. it'll get your foot tapping. Okay, guys, so that is your hashtag of the day. Hashtag TD Duets. What, what other weird musical pairing would you want to hear? So like a, like a musician or a person and then something maybe in nature or maybe you, I don't know, you want to hear the sound. Or get clever of, with a band name. Yeah, get, get clever with it. Whatever you guys want to do. Um, okay, this very last story is... Super creepy, and I. But I'm also really intrigued, and I feel like I would try it, even though I don't even like mushrooms. Okay, so making 3D printed snacks, like we've, like we saw at mm -hmm. CES, is kind of hard because when you 3D print, it's a paste. So really, there are only a few options you can have. You can make like uh, chocolates, ice, cream. ice creams, or like pro, like or or something that's like liquefied protein, right. something like that. Something that was liquefied and then hardened, or, and then and, or, and can be rehardened. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, this is very interesting. This is called Edible Growth. It is by a woman named Chloe Rutzerfeld, and she found a way to pr 3D print this sort of shell. 
uh, that is made out of insect flour. So it's, it almost looks like pastry dough. And, um, and so she says you can use an, another type of doughy material if eating insect flour kind of freaks you out. But we've already had insect flour on this show. We and ate, it's gross. We ate cricket cookies, and I thought they were all right. So no, I feel they like were okay. Uh, I didn't taste See, insect Kale, at all, but Kale's it was all in, it up. It's all in, it, I think it's in his head as well. It is. It's, it's placebo. Um, so the shell is printed by a specifically designed 3D printer. Here's what they look like. They kind of look like little, almost uh, like honeycombs-ish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so this is the crazy part. So they print out this little shell, and then inside they put this edible center that's made of agar, and it has seeds, mushroom spores, and yeast. And you give it five days, and it grows its own filling, and then you eat it. So you're just eating a bunch of spores and fungus then? You're eating mushrooms and you're eating, well, no, and then there's like, you could grow like little herbs out of there and stuff. So maybe you eat like a little bit of sage or something that is growing out of there too. Are you eating any 3D printed material? Well, the the um, the actual shell of it is 3D printed. Oh, the shell is edible. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, totally. Great. So it's a it's like it's made of insect flour. So they 3D print out that little like 3D shell, that little round spherical shell, and then they put the agar, the edible agar, in there, and it has like spores and and different things, the seeds and everything, and then you let it grow for five days, and then you eat your snack. Oh wow. And she was saying like you could give it time to, depending on how intense you want the flavor to be, like that's how long you'd wait to harvest it. So if you wanted really intense, bold flavors, you'd wait the full five days. But if not, you'd do it like two or three days in. How many of these are they able to grow at once? I'm thinking mass production right now. Well, mass production, uh, see the thing is, is I would imagine it would probably be pretty slow to print out the little shells. So I think that's sort of the barrier. But she was also saying that like, uh, it'll be a while before we see this kind of thing come to masses, obviously, because there's so many different kind of problems that you have to solve before uh, obviously like like wouldn't it be so weird you go grocery shopping you just like click on a bunch of things and then they send you 3d printed like directions or prints right in front of you yeah that would be like, interesting. and then you just print it out at your house with like some food printer or something it's so weird like to think of that as like a thing that could happen at some point in our lifetime it seems like more of a hassle though to have to buy the individual types of materials to print with right but the agar thing like i would imagine you could buy the agar in bulk like you could buy these little edible kind of pods to put in the 3d printed thing like a keurig or something yeah yeah, yeah. and then you just buy a little pod and then it grows your little mushrooms and then you eat your snack but really weird and it'll be at a bunch of european exhibitions this year it's going to go travel around you can see it people can taste it i think so like they have it at exhibitions like it might they might be able to taste it but they might just say like okay well we'll do one as like a demo and then do we know if this even tastes good though i mean i guess she's she, her thing is basically 3d printed stuff tends to seem very unhealthy Tastes like plastic. And tastes like plasticky or it tastes chalky. That's another like thing people have said. I know when I tasted 3D printed chocolate at CES, it was kind of chalk it was chalky. Yeah. And not in a chocolatey way. It was chalky like a chalk way. Um, but she was saying she was she wants some healthy alternatives. So that was what she came up with. Pretty cool. Oh. All right, guys, uh, we are gonna take a very quick break. We're gonna come back with a round of back at her hack it, and then we're gonna get into your your TD Hotel user feedback and of course our phone photographer today. So don't click away. It's tomorrow daily. Somebody actually figured out how to rig an old, I want to call it an old timey printer. It's terrible. An old timey printer to play the Jurassic Park theme song. Yeah, uh, hopefully it just doesn't run out of ink pretty quickly though. Oh yeah, no, it's going to be really bad. You, replace, you got to replace the toner. Yeah, the, the musical toner. toner. Yeah, musical toner. Uh, that was a terrible joke, which <laughs> means it's time for another segment. This is Back at Her Hackett. Every week we like to take a look at some weird crowdfundy thing and tell you guys whether we uh, personally would back it or hack it. We have no skin in this game. I feel like I have some power this week. Normally do. I don't get any decisions on feel this. Feel the power. This is the power Kale wields yes. every week. The thumbs up or thumbs down. It's kind of like being a Caesar in old Roman times uh. where you can just like decide the fate of a project with just one thumbs up or thumbs down. It's Although the, the stakes were a little higher then. Siskel and Ebert. Decide the fate of a movie with a thumbs up or thumbs down. Uh, okay, stakes were a lot higher. I'll <laughs> give you that. Um, nobody is going to be eaten by a tiger today. So this is Ringo, and I don't mean the drummer for the Beatles. This is, well, it's kind of a, it is a kind of a bug though. Mm -hmm. 
So Ringo is an Arduino powered robot that actually has some personality, which is kind of fun. Um, we have some really cool video from their Kickstarter where it shows sort of what it is. So this guy, uh, his daughter helped him design this. She's really into programming. Apparently she's under the age of five or is five and knows some programming, which is wow. crazy. Like she's, she, she likes coding. And this kind of got her into that. So Ringo, again, Arduino powered, has an accelerometer, a gyroscope, LEDs, music chirper, ambient IR light sensors. Uh, it's got transmitters, a bunch of other sensors on there. It's got, I mean, it's got all kinds of stuff. This is like a pretty jam-packed little little robot here. It can follow light, which mm. is really cool. Um, so he's saying like you could use this as like a digital pet, sort of get people into coding. Sure. No matter what age. And it won't pee on your desk. It will not pee on your desk or anywhere else in your house, for that matter, uh, which is pretty awesome. And uh, it's he basically the goal is to get people into programming. So whether you are a kid or an adult who's thinking, hey, I want to learn some coding, this might be a really good way to get into that. Or if you have, uh, if you know somebody who maybe has some interest, doesn't know where to get started, again, this would be a really good place to do it. And then um, he also said that this can scale up to some really advanced programming if you're so inclined. So well, even advanced programmers could use it. I'm trying to figure out what you would program it to do currently. Well, obviously, you'd program it to fetch the newspaper and your slippers and your corn cob pipe. Very tiny newspaper. Very tiny newspaper. A little tiny newspaper made for bugs. This is the bug newspaper, of course. Um, the bug daily. The yeah, daily there, bug. There's got to be a lot of tragic events that happen in the lives of bugs for a daily newspaper. <sighs> so much murder. So much tragedy. That's true. I don't want to read a bug newspaper. That'd be the most. I think our news is depressing. It's even worse. It's even worse in the when bugs world. Like giant terrorist uh, attacks essentially happening to all their communities every all second day, every of day. every day. It's yeah. just uh, and it's just a person's foot. Like it's just terrifying. Uh, they can talk to other Ringos. Like you can have you can have them swarm if you want. So if you wanted to create your own bug army, I mean you could do that. A robot bug army. Um, so here's okay. So here's my question. This is what this is really where the crux of it is. So it's a little pricey, eighty nine dollars for a Ringo robot, and one twenty nine if you want to be in the first round of shipments. Ugh. So you do have to have a, a basic understanding though, because I don't have any understanding of programming whatsoever. I would not know where to begin with something like this. So part of their Kickstarter is their website. When the product ships, their website is going to unroll a whole bunch of video tutorials and classes on how to get started oh, okay. with programming. Cool. So that's part of it. So you're you're it's like little classes too. That almost seems like it makes the price point worth it because Fair. you pay hundreds of dollars at a college to go learn that stuff. That's true. But with this, you get a little robot, you get uh, the basic Some, like, instructions. Some video instruction. Yeah. And then, of course, you'll have access to the open source community who, if you want to take it a step further after you get past those like basic instructions, you'd be able to have all those resources at your face. In addition to the internet in general, that's just a giant resource. Giant resource, kind of yeah, of course. I say uh, if this seems like a really awesome thing and you, you know for a fact you really want to get into programming, like I say back it. But if not, I say Yeah, wait. if you have plans on, get going, a raspberry pie. on going further than this, you yeah. sh it would be a good investment. But if you're not sure, what do you think? Yeah, I don't know. Build I can, that power, Logan. I, for, personally, I don't want to get into programming. I'm not, I've never had the mind for it. Uh, I could see this ending up in my kitchen drawer with all, with all the AA batteries mm, that fair. are half charged. Mm, I see, I see. Um, so for me, I'm going to say no. But I also, but I, I do like that it is, uh, I'm going to say hack it. Uh, hack it. Hack it? Hack That's it. That's a bad one. Um, but I do like these kinds of educational toys that are getting children or, or anybody more interested in what it could potentially be the industry of the future. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I like that too. So I say like for the for the good of science and for the forwarding of robotics education, I say back it. But I also say that if you have a kid and you're thinking about buying this for them and they have a really short attention span, maybe just wait until they really show you they're into robotics. That's what I think. Yeah, I'm going to say hack it because, hack it. because I think right. you can learn a lot of stuff for free on the internet as is. Fair enough. But you don't get a pre-built little bug robot. That's so. true. And it is safer than like tinkering with something that has a big power supply like, like potentially cause a fire stuff. or something. Yeah, see, that's, it does seem like a safer alternative. It is kind of a pre-built, uh, ready to program, ready to code sort of thing. So it's, uh, it's kind of cool. All right. So now that we're done with that, uh, I promised you guys last week, and we're so sorry we missed out, uh, to talk about your user feedback for TD Hotel. So uh, let's hit user feedback. Okay, so TD Hotel, uh, what was your answer? What's the what's the themed hotel that you want to stay at? Because we talked about the Godzilla Hotel, 
And a lot of people thought that was really cool. Uh -huh. But uh, a lot of people, you guys had way better ideas than the Godzilla Hotel, I just want to say. Because they came up with amenities, like activities to do in the hotel. It's like crazy. I want to stay in a Power Rangers Command Center themed room where I want a, an LED Zordon on the wall. And, and I like that. He, and he can respond to you and talk to you much like Siri. I like it. It's pretty good. Um, OK, so Josh wrote to us first and said, Nostromo Alien Hotel, air duct crawling sounds, flamethrower marshmallow roasting, and air vent play area for the, ch for the kids. Uh, which, that is great. <laughs> and then Fritz wrote in and said, Gundam theme hotel, since there's a Gundam cafe already, with anti-gravity hallway and room also. Do you get to walk around between the hallways uh, in a Gundam? I think so. I think that would be the point. It's like the hotel is a Gundam. Ooh, what if like to get into your room, it's like getting into a Gundam? Like it, <sighs> a big door opens up, and you have to like essentially get into a seat to be able to flip around and get into the room. That would be amazing. I would love that. Um, and then Neil wrote in and said, "Hotel themed on Cube movie. The room shift every hour. <laughs> Hashtag where the toilet go." <laughs> that's, a, that's a scary thought. That is really terrifying. A, a cube themed room. I actually thought um, after I read his tweet, I was like, "Man, why didn't I say last week a portal themed hotel?" Hotel would be great. Where you have the speed, the speed goo, and you can like run really fast, mm -hmm. and like the bounce goo. I think it would be great. I so the technology so included then. Yeah, the, with testing, you gotta have the testing. But no, and the turrets don't actually kill you. They like, they like put like rays of happiness on you, or like <laughs> massage you, or whatever. Uh, okay, then Leo wrote in and said, "I would die a thousand times to sleep in an Adventure Time themed hotel featuring the Ice Kingdom and Bubblegum Bubblegum Kingdom." And, uh, you know, Leo, I bet you are jumping for joy this morning when you found out there's going to be an Adventure Time movie. Yeah. And that, Kale, too. That, that was exciting news. I, I haven't seen an episode of Adventure Time, but I have to get into it. Kale, I'm sure, actually might be able to fly here with his own arms out of his excitement because he probably was like this, like freaking out when Whoa. he heard there was going to be an Adventure Time movie. Um, Kylie wrote in and said, My TD hotel would obviously be Princess Toadstool uh, Peach's Castle. Who wouldn't? Stay there. That would be awesome. I remember uh, when I was playing Mario Kart on the N64, uh, the track where you're, the pe Peach's you Raceway. Past. I would, I would just free roam around that place just because you could roam around. It is a really the nice castle. I'm jealous. Yeah. I feel like she's like the coolest royal ever. And then lastly, Jolly emailed us and wrote in and said, "I think I'd like a hotel where every room or floor was themed on a different movie property, and then they would move you between them every day. You could go out for the day and come back to get surprised with what film you were in for the night." Yeah, I really like this. This is a really good idea. Yeah. I think that, like, you go in, you have one room, and the next thing, you come home at the end of the day, come back to the hotel, and it's like, oh, here's your other room. We moved all your stuff. Now it's Indiana Jones. Now it's Indiana Jones, and you're going to watch Indiana Jones that, tonight. That would be great. And then you wouldn't have to decide on a theme that way because it'd be several themes in one. You know how you could do that? Jolly, I listen, I'm with you. Projection technology. Oh, yeah, like the like entire room projection. Total room projection, and it changes the theme of your room every time you go into it. Like when you hit the key, uh -huh. it changes the theme of your room. That Boom. would be great. Done. You're welcome, hotels. I just made you a billion dollars. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time for our very last piece of user feedback, which is always our photographer of the day. So, our photographer of the day today is Robert. He writes in and he says, hi guys, love the show, great chemistry and lots of fun. I have never submitted anything, but Ashley's pursuit of her favorite picture got me hoping I could become her favorite. Well, let's see, let's see if he lives up to we'll it. We'll see. Anyway, here it is, shot with a Galaxy Note 4. It was taken from the Charleston SC Aquarium. It is the Arthur Ravenel Jr. Bridge. Hope you feature it in the show. Keep up the great work. Respectfully, a good human. I love ocean pictures. That's a pretty great show. I live near the ocean, and so it's always nice when a photographer or a photographer is able to capture something that I don't see every day. Yeah, I don't live near the ocean. I mean, cl I close-ish well, compared I mean, I to live, other people. I live yeah. near the ocean in the sense that I could drive there in less than an hour. Right, yeah. I, I, I'm with you on that. Um, so I really like that picture. Wait, wait, Rune, can we see the picture some more? We're going to talk about it. We're going to discuss this picture for a little bit. OK, so we got this beautiful sailboat. And we have a nice bridge. Solo cloud in the sky. This is, it, he took this from an aquarium. So this is all very water-based. Oh, yeah. This is all very water-based. Took it from an aquarium. So I it must be this. like on the deck of the aquarium then or something. Somewhere outside. Yeah, somewhere outside. And then it, that, that in the background is the Arthur Ravenel Jr. Bridge. What if this was just the mural at the aquarium? What if he, yeah, that would be amazing. He's just like, I took this picture <laughs> of this painting on a wall, and, and it looked so real that I sent it in. Uh, no, I really dig this. I, listen, it's pretty good, Robert. It's pretty good. But I don't know. 
Is it, is it my favorite? I mean, it's so close. Like, I mean, you know, maybe if there was a dolphin jumping out of the water, that's what would have made yeah, it my favorite. Yeah. I think so that's what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to start telling everybody what would have made that picture <laughs> my favorite if it's not. Photo? What's missing? I'll tell you. Uh, and if you want your photography to be featured on the show, uh, you can send it over to us to be considered to tomorrow at CNET.com. You can also send us story ideas. You can send us tips and tricks, uh, game genie codes, whatever floats your boat that day. It's totally game fine. Codes. And uh, you can also find us on social media. We're on Snapchat, Tumblr, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We're all Tomorrow Daily there and Tomorrow Daily TV over on Google+. And if you're listening or watching on iTunes, don't forget to subscribe or rate and review us because that gets more eyes and ears on the show. And then we get to do cooler stuff and show you guys. Very true. And if you are on YouTube, uh, give me a thumbs up because really, you guys, it's all I have. It's all I have is to get your thumbs ups and your, your happy comments down below. And if you're the first commenter, don't forget to say first. Make sure you say first. And also, you guys should all tell Kale that you're mad at him for not flying back home at any cost. He should have road tripped it, really. Yeah. Should have just gotten in, a, like, stolen a tractor and dro driven it all the way across. As soon as he knew he wasn't going to make it, he should have gone and bought those tennis shoe shoes. Yeah. The, the tennis racket shoes. He should have and, Forrest Gumped it and yeah, just ran right it. across the country. That's all I'm saying. It's not too late for tomorrow, though. So. It's, it is. It, that is true. It is not too Kel, late. Kel's a pretty fast person. That is true. All right, guys. Uh, if you want to send someone the show, the easiest way to do it is to send them to tomorrowdaily.com. We promise you that is much easier than typing in a whole bunch of words uh, in an internet address. Easiest one. And uh, you can find us on our personal Twitters. I'm at Ashley Skedda. Logan, where can we find you on the internet? You can type my name into Google, and it's Logan Moy, M-O-Y, and my Twitter will pop up, uh, my website, all that fun is stuff. Is Instagram a pretty good my like, Instagram is where I probably spend most of the time interesting I, pictures I'm most uh, I'm most interactive with the Instagram he's one of the, those Instagram kids yeah. Instagram kids love the and, visuals and of course we will be back tomorrow with a brand with a whole brand new docket of weird wonderful science and uh, fancy fancy schmancy geek pop culture stuff uh, but until then before that though we need to pay our respects to a, a late great per, a late great I was just gonna say character in, until then live long and prosper you guys and be good humans. We'll see you next time. Bye.